right, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this excellent video on occasional cards, how you're going to make your occasional card, all the steps you're going to need to do, the methods. We're going to cover everything here on this video from start to finish, A to Z. We're going to start out by showing you what paper to use, how to lay out your paper correctly with tape to tape off and around your painting so that it comes out beautifully um, framed out with a, a nice beautiful white border and enough border left that's for your message. We're going to show you how you're going to get this message com completely laid out onto your card perfectly every time without any fuss or muss. We're going to also show you how you'll do your writing on the interior of your card. We'll show you the steps of how to take a scrap piece of paper first and put your message down there, get it all worked out, then do your light pencil lines across your inside of your card to do your final message so that everything comes out perfect the first time and there's no uh, issues with ruining a card once you've made your card. You want to make sure you're rock solid with all your steps. So again, the tape, the border, the painting, how you, what colors you're going to use. We're putting all our colors in our palette first before we start painting. And then once all our colors are in our palette, we'll create the painting quickly, efficiently. We can get these cards done in 20 minutes to a half an hour once we have done it a few times. Again, I've done this many times, but I do it slow for you. We use our Sharpie markers for our message. We use rulers. We use a T-square here to get all your lines perfectly straight for all the lines you're going to use on your card. So stick around, stick here with me. Be right back in a second. We'll get started. And we're going to have a lot of fun. And these are incredibly enjoyable. You'll be able to make three or four or six or a dozen ahead of time so that when occasions come up, you already have yours all prepped and ready to go. Okay, be right back. All right, we're going to keep moving along here. We just saw the finished painting, occasional card. So um, how are we going to get to that point where we get everything all put together and we're ready to paint, draw and paint? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to cover it now. Let's get started here. The first thing I do is um, this would be like your ultimate. If you want to just have like things a, a little bit easier for yourself where you um, don't have to do as much um, work with the paper, like cutting down the paper with scissors or figuring things out like that, you can just basically, if you have, these are great. I, I buy these often for finished paintings and, and occasional cards too as well. Mostly for occasional cards I purchase these for. Or for sketchbook painting outdoors. It's easy to bring these outdoors. You just kind of like tape them up on your easel or put them in your lap. And, um, you know, you're ready to go. And then when you're done with the painting, you just simply put a, a small um, a letter opener in here and just trim off one sheet of paper. And then you have all these other sheets left. And you just, when you're done, you fold over your top there. You throw it in your duffel bag or your, um, your art uh, case. And then, uh, you know, you're back to get to the next location. And you open back up again and you start a new painting. And then here with the occasional cards, it works great. And, of course, this is Arches paper. This is um, hot press paper, so it's got a really, really smooth finish, which is really nice for flowers like we're going to do here in this painting. So basically, um, we're just going to use, um, I, I think this is a good investment if you can get a T-square, a small T-square. You don't necessarily have to have a small T-square like this, but this does really help qu quicken the process of getting some lines on your paper really neatly, straight, and then you you're not worrying too much about measuring and things like that. So the first thing I would do is I, I have my paper here. I probably would, just for safety reasons, I would tape it down just so it doesn't move at the top. And then I would just basically get my center points so that I can actually divide the card in half. All I, all I actually need is to take this piece of paper and divide it right in the exact halfway point like this. So it's really kind of simple. I just take my... Um, T-square. It's a, a regular 12-inch T-square. So I set it up on the paper edge like that. This is a perfectly square cut piece of paper, rectangle. So I just use that, set it on there, and I go up to the top, and I have 10 and 1 quarter inches. So that means I need 5 and 1 eighth inch, and that's the exact center point of this piece of paper going uh, across this way, horizontally. 
Then I do the same thing down here. Actually, you don't even have to do that. Once you have that center point here, then you can just drop your T-square on here, which keeps your line perfectly plumb and perfectly square like this to the outer edges of your paper, your block. Call this a block, watercolor block. And that's it. All you have is that one line. You're really, that's all you need. So, you know, these are incredibly handy. Um, I think these are made by, this says the, the see-through ruler company, the see-through ruler company. That's who makes this. So I got this many years ago. I use it all the time. So now we have that perfect center mark there, center line. Now the next thing is we want to take, um, a piece of printer paper. Let me see if I can find some printer paper. I'm ducking over here on the side by my art table. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to take, this is going to be the front of the card, and this is going to be the back of the card. So the face of the card, and then the back of the occasional card here. So then what's quite simple is I just take this piece of printer paper, like this, line it up with the line. Now what you can do to make life easier is you could take a small piece of scotch tape or something like that, like this, and then just maybe put a little piece of tape on there, like that, just to hold it in place. Then I take artist tape or a drafting tape, and then I set down a piece of tape right on that pencil line, and I place it this way, on this side of the on this side of the line. So my pencil line is right here where the paper is. And I just take this. The reason I have this paper is so we don't splash on the back of the card. We don't want the back of the card to look all messy and everything like that. So, and then I just take that tape like that and that's it. Just like that. Simple as that. So you have one, now you have one border, piece of tape. That's the border here. Perfect. Then we're going to go with one across the top. Same thickness, we're going to use the same tape, like this. We're going to get a good even border, like that. And we're going to go with another one over here. Three sides are going to be the exact same thickness of, of white border. It's going to end up looking like a beautiful white mat around your card. You don't have to do anything, just put some tape on like we're doing here. You can get creative and do some different ideas with tape as far as how wide your borders are, how thin they are. That's up to you. Sometimes you might even think you might not need a border around your um, card. I think it looks better with a border myself, but um, you can do it and be creative and do other things too as well. So you're the artist, you'll come up with creative ideas. Maybe you do a few like this and then you try some other ideas. And then I'm going to use a uh, larger piece of thicker drafting tape or pro artist tape for the bottom. I want the bottom to be a little thicker, so I just take maybe double the thickness uh, or width of this tape here. And I just put that on the bottom. And you can see through the tape, actually. Like when I'm looking at this right now, I can see right through this tape and I can see the bottom edge of this watercolor block here. So I can kind of see already what it's going to be like. And I say, yeah, that looks about good. I want it. Maybe I'll even go a little further. Maybe I'll go a little more. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll use almost the whole roll of tape here, the whole width of the tape, but not quite all. And there we go. So now I'll just peel that off like that. It doesn't have to be super neat. Usually I try to make things neat for everyone here on my videos, so it looks really good. Everyone appreciates that. But you know, if they get you know, just as long as you get that covered good, the bottom of your paper, and that's where you that's where you write your message on the bottom here. And we'll show you how to do that in just a little while. First, let's just get our tape down so we can sort of get started on our pencil sketch and get our drawing in here. And get our painting going. So you can kind of see how simple that process is. Pretty easy, right? Kind of just one more speeding it through really quick. We have our watercolor block, which is a perfect rectangle block of watercolor paper. You could use a regular sheet of paper. You don't need the watercolor block. You can just use a regular sheet of watercolor paper. You can trim it down to any size you want. Theoretically, you want a rectangle shape so that you have enough width width of the card on both sides so that you can fold it in half. 
So that's why I use this rectangular block. This way I divide it right in the half, and then it's enough. I can completely fold this right in half, and it makes a beautiful card, just like that. So we, we use this block. We made a little mark on there, perfect center of the block, so that we have the perfect center line of the watercolor paper here. And then, of course, we just put our uh, piece of sheet of paper down to cover the back of the car. We don't want splashes and all kinds of paint on there. We could even go with one more bit of tape here on this side just to seal it so nothing gets under there, any kind of splashes or runs of watercolor paint underneath there. So now this piece of paper here, this sheet of uh, printer paper, is completely covering this other side of the card or the back side of the card. And this is the front side of the card. And that's pretty much, again, we taped all around it. Three sides is the three-quarter inch tape. I believe that's three-quarters. Let me see what size tape that is. Let me measure this here just to double check. So this is, yeah, three-quarter inch tape about, yeah, three-quarters. Three-quarter inch tape around the sides and the top. And then in the bottom here, this tape is uh, about two-inch tape, two-inch wide roll. And we used about inch and a quarter. Yes, inch and a quarter on the bottom up, from the bottom up. So now we have a beautiful taped off sheet of watercolor paper. And again, you don't have to use the block. You can use regular paper. We've said that a couple times, so you kind of get that. You don't have to go out and buy a block of paper. You can use any old paper you have, any watercolor paper. You can use printer paper even. You can use, get creative. It's up to you. So now what I'll do is I'll just set this up so that it looks good for our video here. So. What I'll do is, um, I'm going to take a break right now, and this way I'll set this all up and I don't waste your time. But all I'm doing right now is, I'm going to set this all up so it fits just perfect in the camera of you here, in the, in the um, video camera, our, our viewing for this video. I'm going to make sure this is all set up good with the palette, my glass of water, you know, so everything's going to look good right now. We're zoomed really far back, you can kind of see. I'm kind of zoomed back further than I usually am. Usually I'm zoomed more into the you know, the, the painting itself and the uh, watercolor uh, palette. So let me do that. Let me set this up a little more so I can get closer in. You can kind of see the painting a little bit better, more uh, close up, and uh, that'll be really good. So, um, yeah, just give me a minute or two, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my new setup here, everybody. Hope you're uh, joining along with me here and having a fun time as we go. We're just kind of setting our table up here. I'm setting up my table so everything is all uh, good to go for the uh, video camera here. We have our occasional card here on the right hand side. Uh, I have it taped down to my table top so it doesn't move around. It's nice and strong and sturdy. Then on top of that I just put my palette right here so it's close by. It's actually sitting on the watercolor block of paper too. Uh, and then we have just a simple glass of water, fresh clean water, uh, and then a nice uh, damp sponge here just to check off some water for our brush. I have a simple mechanical uh, pencil here, number uh, 9, number 9 uh, lead size, 0 0.9 millimeter lead size. And then uh, what else do we have? We'll use a uh, probably like a pretty small Da Vinci Maestro uh, Kalinske um, travel brush. This is like a number 4, number 4 size. So you can kind of see it's very, very small and it works good for this size painting we're going to do on this occasional card. And we'll also use maybe another size. Maybe we'll use a um, another travel brush here with maybe a number six round. So we'll use two round brushes, small in size. And we might even kick it up a notch. And if we have a larger area we might want to cover, maybe we'll go up to a number, uh, number eight uh, brush like this here, number eight round brush. So we'll dampen that up before we start painting. We'll dampen up our brushes, get those hairs in the brush damp and moist and this way we'll be ready to paint. So basically three round sizes of brushes should be perfect for this uh, painting, this occasional card we're going to do. So let's move right along here. The next thing we're going to do is get our drawing in. So I'm just going to do a real simple improv of some lilies. I'm doing some lilies here. Very simple. You can see me here as I draw them. I'm not going to get too um, fancy. I'll just put a, a vase right in the center. So I maybe might go up about one quarter of the paper. So if I think of the paper as broken down into quarters, my rectangle, this is a portrait 
style um, rectangle, which is in the vertical position. So usually we paint most times like landscapes and city scenes and a lot of our paintings we do in the landscape format, but this happens to be in the vertical format. I like to paint in the vertical format too a lot. So you'll probably see me use my paper in the upright position a lot, the, the, the rectangle. So now we're just going to say, well, how are we going to divide our space up when we're drawing our vase and our flowers here? Some lilies, just a quick, small, beautiful, little quick painting. Looks good, quick, fast and free. I'll make it into quarters. So I'll go top, bottom, halfway is half, and then quarters. One quarter here and one quarter here. So basically we're looking at four quarters. One, two, three, four. Kind of like in cooking, you know, you have a quarter cup, half cup. Same idea, just we're making parts, dividing our paper into parts. So we'll say the first quarter is approximately the bottom of the vase, even a little bit less. I might go a little bit less than a quarter up from the bottom. And I'll just make a little vase shape, that's all. Just like a little top of a vase here and just make that idea. That's it, nothing too fancy, anything like that. We might even just... erase a little bit here, like that. And then what I'm going to do is right away I'd like to start my uh, petals, uh, my, my leaf forms. So I'm going to actually cover this side of the vase with one of the larger leaves maybe. So I'll just go like this and I'll, I'm going to make a leaf form like that. And then I'm going to come up this way, and then I'm going to make one of the lilies, lilies there, another one here, and there's some more leaf forms here, Then there's another lily form here, like so, and then it can be loose and fun. You can kind of see I'm just getting some ideas here of the lily petals and flowers. Like that. And then we, we're going to have another shape over here like so. And then let's just go right out of the picture frame here with another leaf form like this. And then another leaf form down here like so. And then maybe we'll have another leaf form up here, like this, and then maybe another leaf form like that. So we're having all kinds of interesting shapes here of leaf forms and our lilies. And once we have that all sort of very loosely drawn in with that pencil lines, like these pencil lines. So you can literally take any flowers you like and go in online and find some flowers you might like. And you just, you know, pictures or in magazines or in watercolor books, whatever you might have. Um, I have a lot of paintings of watercolor. Um, I mean, I have a lot of videos on YouTube in my archives. So if you type in Chris Petrie flower paintings or flowers, you'll see I have probably 100 videos or maybe 75 in my YouTube archives. So if you ever wanna go back and look at a, a lot of flower paintings that I've done before, you can do that. And I know many of you have seen most of them and a lot of you have actually painted all of them too, I'm sure. So uh, we're just uh, kind of going along here and going with the process of how are we gonna do an occasional card? And then when it comes to doing the flower part and drawing in a flower and painting, you could pick anything you want and get as creative as you want, as simple as you want. You can make it a little more complex. I consider this a little more kind of complex then versus just maybe like one rose or maybe like a daisy or something like that with some colors. But you can keep it as simple and fast as you want or you can get a little more fancy like we did here. But the choice is up to you and especially when you're making occasional cards, I always find that I'm in a rush a lot of times. You know, I'm always busy rushing around. And I'm like, oh, I got to make a card for somebody for their birthday, my family, one of my family members or friends. I, I start, you know, I just get into like a real fast mode like, oh, let me get it done quick. And that's how we're going to do it here. The same thing. We're not going to spend four hours here. Boom. We got all our stuff out. Got our tape on our paper. Just made sure we centered that uh, tape around our paper so that when we fold the paper in half, it's going to be a perfect 
fold right in the middle of the card. And, and then that's all you really have to do. And the rest is kind of just simple. We're getting in a nice little fancy painting here. But you can do a nice simple painting, just one flower with some splashes and color, however you want to do it. All right, so we've got a good portion of this done so far. The drawing's done, all the pr preparatory work we've gotten completed. Now it's just a matter of, um, we'll take a quick uh, break now. I'm just gonna take a quick break and then I'll come back and we'll start painting this. And I think you're gonna see we're gonna have a lot of fun, simple color scheme here. We're gonna go with the, mix all our colors. So that's another thing we're gonna do right now is we're gonna mix all our colors first before we start painting. And this way it makes it a breeze. You just get your colors on your palette, figure out what colors you're gonna use, right? That makes sense? Get the colors you're gonna use that you can see in the reference photo you have or the picture you're working from or a picture on your phone or in a magazine or in an art book, whatever it is. One of my videos if that I might've done in the past, you, you just kind of look at it and say, what colors did Chris use there? Well, I, I could see he used uh, some like reds, some alizarin crimson and cadmium red. Uh, oh, I can tell he used some greens in there and some blues. That's all you have to do is just get a rough estimate of what colors you're going to need, put them into the palette, and you're ready to go. And we can get this done in like 10 minutes, this painting right here. So we'll do that just in a second. Okay, be right back. Wow, we're back and we're going to get done. We're going to get this done really quickly. All right, let's get started with our paints and what colors are we going to use. Let's get our colors on our palette right away. That's the perfect start to your watercolor painting. You might not do that if you're going to, you know, if you're going to do like a really, really large, well, you would do that, I think, watercolor for the most part. You can kind of always use this method and this technique of just at least get the main colors you're going to use for your painting onto your palette. And then you can always, if it's a larger painting, you can, you know, take breaks and then put more paint back in into your palette and clean up your palette if there's too much muddy colors getting all mixed up and stuff. You clean it all up nice, put more colors, same colors you used before you put back down on there. But don't don't get too hard on yourself because in the beginning when you first start watercolor painting, you're not gonna remember all your colors. Like it took me years to memorize all the colors that I use. But I always say, um, and tell me if this makes sense, if you're gonna work with your palette and you have other people that are working with a palette, like professional artists, myself, there's a lot of other professional artists out there, and if you notice, most of them, they stick with the same palette year after year after year. You could check out somebody's palette that they were working with 10 years ago, and they're using the same colors 10 years later. Yes, they might, I as well as myself, we might add in a color here and there once in a while, like an interesting um, color that might, we might add as like a specialty color once in a while, depending on the painting, of course, but for the most part, the best thing if you can is just have your standard palette and your colors fixed, you know, figured out. Eventually, you know, get yourself to where you have a comfortable palette that you can use all the time of colors. Stick with those same colors. And this way, when you're working, you'll always know what colors you're working with. And then if you clean up your palette and you're going back into work again, once you look over at your painting, you'll know right away, oh yeah, I know I use this, 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 and this, and this, and this one. Because you're, you're, you're so used to your colors all the time and the same colors like, if you have 40 different colors on your palette, that could work too. You, you know, you're, you're the artist, you can create your, your own paintings your own way. I'm just saying what worked for me is kind of keeping a simpler palette. You know, I, might, I maybe have like 15 or 16 or 18 colors and I kind of just stick with all of those the same, but I can always add in a few little extra ones here and there if I need to, you know, to add up a little bit of spice into and variety into a painting or something, but that might work for you. You can try it out and see what you think. But so now when I'm going to mix this paint, I'm going to start out and just say right away, I know I'm going with my greens. So I'm going to say greens, sap green, olive green. So sap green, olive green, cerulean blue. And I'm really, I've got a great, since this is a flower painting, we're going to use lots of greens. Then I'll use a little bit of raw umber too to warm up those cooler looking colors of the greens. And then uh, maybe a little bit of purple. I'll put down here. We're going to use some purple in this painting. So I'll have some purple there. Makes a really nice gray color when you mix it with some green and gold. And then we're going to, for our lilies, we're going to use cadmium yellow. Cadmium lemon yellow. And some raw sienna. All right, so we have 
most of our colors right here on the palette, ready to go. Maybe a touch of burnt umber for a darker, maybe a touch of burnt sienna. All right, so I've got everything here, mostly like the warm browns and you know raw umber, burnt umber, burnt sienna, kind of these right here, these three, right here. Greens up here, I'm mixing more of the greens, so I need more space, so I'll leave those up here. And, and some blue too, we said cerulean blue. And then here, the yellows, the golds, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow lemon, and some raw sienna. And there we go. Now we have everything all set, ready to go. Next is the fun. <laughs> Let's start having some fun with this. So I'll just start out and I'll start at the bottom and work my way upwards in the painting. And I'll just grab some greens. There we go. And this is really beautiful paper to work with. Hot press is great. It's really like a fast... Um, a speedy kind of paper. You, you, you don't want to keep going over things on hot press. Hot press works best when you just go right in, fire in your, um, your washes and leave them go and let them go and don't kind of, I would say the less painting you do, the better off if you can just get the paint on the paper and let it go and just let it do its thing. You're going to be all the happier. And we're always happily painting. Are we not? Okay, so let's do this. I'm sorry about that. These things are noisy, these glasses. And then we have blue. So the vase is kind of a white with some blue shadowing underneath it. And some green in there too. And I'll say that the light is, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about the light in this, but I think the light is coming from the, from the top, kind of like this. But we're just having fun and getting this in quick. We're not going to spend too much time. This is a really fun, enjoyable flower painting. You can go straight into your palette for straight color without any... Sometimes your palette's just like your ideas first with your colors. You don't necessarily have to keep going back in here. You can get straight color right from your palette and get some straight color without even having to worry about going to the palette at all. Do some of the green up here, and as you can see, the quicker we work, the better it's going to look. Just like that. And then we can make little light and dark areas. So I'll add a little bit of paint over there. Darker paint, darker tonal value. Rinse off my brush, dry off some of the water on the sponge, and then just kind of smooth out that wash there and then we'll do another we'll do another leaf form up here put a little bit of red in that brown kind of change up the color a little bit Adds a little bit of interest to the color. And I wouldn't fill in all the middle section of this um, flower arrangement here in this vase. Don't. I would say please, please think of it as you're going to try to not fill everything in, but you're going to try to leave some white paper within the center areas of your flowers. So I guess we don't want to kind of fill it in like a giant blob of um, paint. We want to leave areas where you can see through 
through the bouquet of flowers. Like, so you want to be able to see light f behind this bouquet of flowers and these petals and leaf forms and things like that. So I think that's important to note. I always tend to note that when I paint flowers, like a vase of flowers, to try to keep some lightness to the center of the flower arrangement instead of getting it all blocked in with too much paint. That can look kind of um, unpleasant looking. So I'm getting some more gold and yellows in here for our lilies. And what else do we have here? Over here we, got, we have a darker brown, kind of a raw umber. I'll go straight into my raw umber like that to get more of a shadowy yellow there. Maybe a little bit of blue in there, like that. And we have another green leaf form here. And look at how well this is coming out so far. And we're not working that hard. You can see we're not working that hard. We're going quickly. We're leaving lots of white paper in the center of the vase, fl of bouquet of flowers. Our, our lilies here, our gold lilies, and then we're going to have some more. There we go. And again, yes, this doesn't look like I've spent two weeks drawing and painting this. It looks very loose though and very fun and uh, happy paint. A happy painting is a fast painting. Um, I would not want to sit here and do an occasional card and spend four hours painting this. Um, it's the fun of it, doing it quickly. So you can see I'm, I'm going to add a little more, infuse a little more colors while I can, while these are still damp, these, these uh, washes. When your washers are still damp, you can infuse more colors. Like I'm doing now, some sap green over here. Maybe a little bit of blue, um, cerulean blue, here, like that. couple of stems. A couple of stems and that is it. Perfect couple of splashes if, if you want. I would change my water quickly here. Tell you what, let me take a break. I'll change my water out this way. I don't, uh, I want to maybe let this dry just for about maybe five or ten minutes and I think I'd like to do this a little better here. That looks a little better I think now. That leaf form I think looks a little better like that and maybe a little bit of darker. A couple of darker spots in there. to add some interest there. There, Okay. All right, we'll be right back, and uh, I hope you'll subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, it's right on the right-hand side. You click subscribe, and all that's going to do is each time I make a new video going forward in the future, and if this is your first time here, thank you so much for coming by. I'm glad you're here. I'm really excited that you're here painting along with us, and we're having a, just a wonderful um, experience in watercolors. I'm trying to give you the best information I have with watercolors on a weekly basis so that you can keep coming back and Join along with this every week that you can. Some weeks I realize you can't make it. you got some 
uh, things to do once in a while. You're busy. You've got busy schedules. We all most times have busy schedules. Some of you might have a little more time on your hands. You can join every week, but I encourage you try to watch the videos every week, even if you have to maybe do it during the middle of the week. You can um, do a little bit of work on the uh, videos during the week if you can't get here on the weekends. But really, I hope you'll keep joining along with us. And if you subscribe, you won't miss anything. And as well, too, if you thumbs up the video, I know you will you will really like this type of video. And this way, I'll make more of these in the future for you. Uh, I'm really happy to be here on YouTube and working for everybody. So um, I'm really excited. And um, going into the future, we're going to do a lot of paintings like this, lots of flower paintings. We always put uh, flower paintings into our schedule here because I know many, many people here, many of you know my students, you really enjoy flower paintings, so that's why I do them often. And especially here now, too, when we're doing occasional cards, perfect type of subject matter for occasional cards. And so um, let's I'll come right back in about two minutes, and we'll finish up this painting, and we'll see how it all works out once we peel off all the tape and get everything all set. And we'll maybe uh, show you how you finish it by um, putting a message on the inside. I'll show you exactly how to do that, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Be back in just a second. Okay, we are back, and let's uh, get right back into this here. Sometimes when you take breaks, you'll come back and think to yourself when you're looking at your painting, ah, I think I can do something a little more interesting here. What may it be? I, I kind of have a feeling I need to add something to this. And then that's about the time you start to have the recollection of other paintings you've done on my channel, of course, maybe. And I say right here when I'm looking at this, I think I need to explain the vase a little better. Because I see the flowers here. This is, looks good. Looks like a nice bouquet of flowers. But I feel like I didn't get the um, vase looking as good as I maybe could have. So the best next best, best thing I can do is how can I modify this a little bit? And then I thought maybe I can make a handle on this like it's a um, pitcher. So then I kind of, in my mind, do this. like that. And that, if I do this handle, I think it might look a little better. Let's try it. So I'll take my uh, smallest brush I have, the number four travel brush, and I'll do a little blue, cerulean blue, maybe even a little bit of cobalt blue, and some purple. And let me see if I can do this. And that looks pretty good. And then why not? I'll take some purple and French ultramarine blue. And maybe we'll make a little, some little flowery type things here on our vase like this. Maybe that will look good. I think that does look pretty good. And then maybe a little larger of a flower over here on the vase. And then maybe if you think that doesn't look so good with a flower in the middle, you can always lift that off with a tissue. Take a little bit of wet brush, rinse off the brush real good, dry it off on a tissue, and then just kind of blend it in. Arches paper is probably one of the best papers in the world, probably could be the best paper I've ever worked with. I'm not sure. I know I always have great results with Arches paper, that's for sure. So here, Maybe I'll try to dampen the paper here a little bit and see if I can take a tissue and maybe just lighten this up a little bit and maybe just rub on it. And yes, it does. It lightens up a little bit. So then I've lightened up the vase over here on this side and I've made it a little interesting and I took a little bit of the blue here, the uh, French ultramarine blue on the underside here like that. And then again, I did the little bit of you know, detail on the on the vase that kind of makes it look like a vase. I, I think it does help the uh, painting to look a little better. You will comment in the comment section whether you like this handle on this perhaps water pitcher with some flowers in there. You might have said, no, Chris, it looked better the other way. I'm thinking it's probably 50-50. But you will let me know in the comments section, won't you? Please do. Let me know in the comments section, do you like the handle on this vase? 
Did I add it toward the end of this here now, or did I fuss around too much with my painting and I ruined it? Um, I don't think it ruined it, but maybe it doesn't look as good as it did before. I'm not sure. Um, I'd have to let it sit for a while and maybe think about it some. Maybe a little splash will help here. So I'll add a splash over there. When in doubt, splash at things. There we go. All right, perfect. Okay, what I'll do is I'll take one more quick five minutes just to uh, take my blow dryer and dry this whole paper right here off completely 100%. It is a little damp now with the few things we added. And then we'll finish up and we'll take all the tape off and see how it looks. Well, we are now complete. How do you like that? Can you see I did a little more detail here? Let me zoom in. I added a touch more detail to the top with some uh, French ultramarine blue. And I think that really helped a lot to kind of explain this handle. This handle was a little bit, I'm not sure if it was kind of looking that great, but once I added this line over here where the picture is, so I put the top of the picture here a little bit with a blue, French ultramarine blue, a nice level line, and then I added a little bit of that line right there. Now I see that it's definitely a picture. I mean, I really, I think that little bit of extra sitting back, taking a break and coming back and looking at it, and I say, wow, yeah, that did make it a lot better for me. I think it's now reads beautifully. It's kind of got that, you can kind of see the handle, and then all of a sudden over here, you're seeing that same French ultramarine blue over on the top of the picture. Now it's rock solid. It looks really good, I think. So this, I think, did work out really good again, but you can uh, let me know in the comments section what you think. Let's uh, finish up here. We'll peel off the tape. Let me move some of these things out of the way here. Okay, so we'll take our palette off here. I always tape my palette down when I'm doing video so that it doesn't move around. That looks annoying, having stuff shifting around on the video. Nothing worse than shaky video, as well as things sliding around. All right, there we go. Let's zoom out a touch here like that. Okay, so now this part you want to be really careful, especially, I'll say this, if we're using like Arches paper, Arches paper is really super high quality. If you're using some student grade type paper, then you have to really be super careful when you're lifting up your tape and peeling your tape up. Because many times I've ruined good paintings because I was trying to peel the tape up too quick and it like tore and ripped a whole piece right off the painting. That is not a fun thing to happen. So don't let that happen to you. Take your tape off real slow. Take your time taking your tape off. I mean, really, really be careful. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to lift this up here like this, like that. So now when you lift up your tape, again, if you have a more expensive paper, less likely to tear and rip when you're lifting off tape. But if you're lifting off tape and it's you're using student grade paper or paper that's maybe not as expensive, again, maybe you, you do it on a 45 degree angle like this. And you take it off super slow. And good tape, too, is a big thing. If you can use um, painter's tape that you get in the hardware stores and the big box stores like Home Depot and Lowe's and all these great big box stores you go to, if you go to the paint, or the paint section where they have all the gallons of paint for, like, when you're, you know, your house paint, when you paint your house inside the rooms or if you're painting outdoors or the deck or whatever, if you go into that section of the store and you just ask them, you need trim tape, they sell the trim tape, which is, like, usually for professional painters that paint trim and they put it on the windows around the windows and on the glass of the windows so that they don't paint over the glass on the windows and all that kind of a thing or on the floors different things like that that tape is great you buy the um it's called frog tape you buy the purple or the green and that works perfect and then there's other tapes that are really good too but i use the purple and the green frog tape they call it they have it i think at the home depot the frog tape and then Lowe's, I think, carries maybe 3M, and 3M makes some great tape, too. But the better tape you use when you're taping on this type of a project, when you're doing occasional cards, 
it really pays off because imagine that you create a beautiful painting and the next thing you start tearing, pulling the tape off and it's tearing up all your paper. That's really frustrating. So you could use scotch tape too. That might work when you buy, I usually, I've used this before too. You use the um, magic tape, scotch magic tape will work too. So if you want to use scotch magic tape, if you want to make sure you don't tear up the paper around the outside edges of the card, that might work too. I've done it before. It works. It does work pretty good, except I'm not sure if it always holds when there's water on it. So if you're splashing around on the paper with watercolor paint, I'm not sure if this will always hold in every situation, but it's worth a try. And um, But again, be very careful when you lift off your tape. You don't want to ruin your painting. And then, um, so now we have the everything, all the tape is off. Now we just have a letter opener. Uh, where's my letter opener? Let me see if I have it. Well, this seconds is a letter opener, I think. This uh, ruler, this ruler works as a letter opener. So I'm going to do that. I'll just go around like this. Perfect. There we go. Does that not look great? Now all we have to do is be really careful. We lift up our, our card. So we have the card here, right? Like this. And all we do is we take this. You can do a number of different ways. The safest way might be, actually the best way I think that I know of, is I just take the paper and fold it like this and then start at one side like this and make sure that the top is perfectly lined up together on the very, very tippy top corner, right hand corner like that, right there. Then you can go this way and gently press, press the paper this way. And then do the same thing and your paper should be all dry and your painting should be all dry. You don't, try not to do this if your painting's still damp. You might have to use your blow dryer to dry this off to get it 100% dry, or you leave it like for three or four hours, or two two hours maybe, and it should be good. And then you go across this way, and you just kind of crimp it across and do this. And then I come down here and I hold the bottom of it, and I do the same thing. I just go like this, and then at that point you have it. It's good. And then you have a perfect card. See that how good that looks? And then you can crease it. Hold you hold the edge down tight. Make sure you kind of hold this edge down tight like this. And then you just kind of just crimp it really good across. And then you, and that's perfect. And then you can stand, the card stands up. I have an angled table here, so it doesn't always, it gives me a hard time sometimes, but. And that's the perfect occasional card like this. Now the next step is, we'll get to this in just a second, again, let me take another break. I'm hoping you're going to stick with me for this last five minutes, which will go over how you're now going to put on a message on the card, and then you're going to go on the inside and set your card up for your own message that you're going to put in there. And I'll tell you how to do it perfectly so that you do not have an issue whatsoever. You'll be able to get whatever message you want in your card perfect every time if you follow my method. Okay, so I'll be right back in a second, and we'll get the rest of this video done in good time. Okay, we're finishing up. We're going to do our message now. We're going to do our writing, our printing, our script, um, whatever you like to do. If you are not great with writing skills or printing, you might have somebody else do it for you. I'm not sure. Um, but if you can, you can always find a way. They have press and stick uh, messages. You can use those little machines that you type in messages, and you can put some of that on here too if you really had to. Um, so again, you're creative, you're the artist, you'll figure out a way to get a message on this card one way or the other. I'm going to show you the way I do it and then you can go from there. So always I try to, again, keep my card nice and still. I don't want it moving around while I'm doing anything, so I put a little bit of drafting tape on here. Just like that, just to hold the card down so it doesn't move around. Then I have a, a, a ruler, so I use a ruler here. I just want to 
use a ruler to get everything properly set on my paper. So the first thing I want to do is say, let's put a message across the bottom here in this bottom section that we left extra large so we do have room for a message. Let me move this up a little bit so it's a little bit higher up like this. And I'll try to zoom in even more like that. That's better. Let me zoom in even more. Okay, better. What I'll do is I'll make sure that my line that I set level across this picture like so is going to be a little bit lower than halfway. So how do I do that? I take my measuring, my ruler, and I measure and say how wide is this bottom white strip across the bottom of my card? And I look at it and it's an inch and a half. So I say, all right, what's an inch and a half? What's the half of an inch and a half? You can use centimeters, millimeters, whatever you like. I use inches usually most of the time standard. I'm used to that from uh, construction all my uh, years. So inch and a half, well I would say half an inch and half an inch gives me one inch. So I know I need at least a half an inch down or a half an inch up from the bottom to get halfway. Well, I need to go another quarter inch. So you need three quarters. Three quarters and three quarters is inch and a half. So I need to go three quarter inch down or three quarter inch from the bottom up. That's my center mark. And now I said I want to go a little lower than the center mark for my straight line across here. So let's say I go um, another eighth of an inch. So I make another eighth of an inch mark there. Okay. Now I measure that and say that is, how high is that? That's approximately half an inch. So I'll say half an inch up from the bottom, that's my line. Half an inch up from the bottom, that's my line. That'll be my line I draw across level. I line up my ruler on those little dots I just made going up half an inch from the bottom of the paper. And I make a really super light pencil line across. Barely visible. I drew a, a pencil line across here, across here, barely visible, half an inch up from the bottom. Then I say I want to make this line approximately a quarter of an inch wide so that I can put my message within those two lines. So then I'm going to make a second line a quarter of an inch up from that first line we just did. So I make a little hash mark there at a quarter inch. I go over here to the other side, quarter inch up from that line we just drew here. And that is my next line I draw. So now you can see I have two, two lines parallel lines, perfectly parallel, a little bit lower than center of this lower portion, this lower band, and that's going to be where we put our message in. You'll erase this pencil line once you're done with your message. So I'll just have a fun time with this. Um, it happens to be uh, Mother's Day this weekend, and I'm going to make my message, and let's see if I have a blue uh, some blue Sharpie here. What do I have in Sharpies? Yeah, I have a blue Sharpie here. Let me use that. Okay, so I have a blue Sharpie marker. And I look at it and the point's kind of worn down on that one, so I'm not going to use that one. I want to have kind of a finer point. I'll tell you what, I have a purple one here. Better yet. So I have a purple, really, really fine purple line. So this is an um, extra fine uh, it's called fine point, Sharpie fine point, and this is purple. And I'm just going to put here. I'm pretty good. Now, what I would suggest is if you're going to do this and you're sometimes not 100% sure of your spelling, I sometimes make spelling mistakes, which is not a problem, but usually I'm pretty good. I usually can get it on the first try and I don't need, but some, sometimes I do need if it depends on what I'm writing here. But all I'll say is if you do super light pencil line first, and do your writing that light pencil line first. Do it that way. And then I did this Happy Mother's Day in light pencil line. And if you find that you didn't have enough room and you went off the paper, you can erase it and start again. You just don't want to do that too many times, it'll rough up the paper. But kind of, you know, 
do a very, very light pencil line first of your writing that you're going to put here. Happy Mother's Day, Happy Birthday, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, a Happy Memorial Day, anything you can think of. Get well soon, feel better, all these different things. Occasional cards, you can do any kind of occasional card you like. And this one we're going to do Happy Mother's Day. And you try to match your ink on your marker or your ink pen or whatever you're going to use. You try to match it to the painting a little bit if you can. That does tend to look better if you can kind of match it. This looks good though. It's a little bit like um, this purplish pink color looks kind of good because it's um, kind of more exciting because it's a little different than the colors we used here. So I'm happy with this. Now, this is the fun part. When you use Sharpie marker, you can erase two minutes, uh, uh, 10 seconds later, and it's fine. Now that we do that, we just, look how great that looks. You just erase those pencil lines you made, even if you're writing the name of the message, whatever it is, that all gets erased when you do that. And now you have a perfect message on the front of your card, and then you do the same thing for your message on the interior of the card. You would open up your card, and I'll zoom out a little bit so we can kind of see better what we're doing here. There we go. So, usually on this side of the card, you wouldn't have any message. This just stays white paper. You can maybe, um, maybe make like a, um, you might put in a famous quote that you like or something like that, an encouraging phrase or um, something like that over here. You get creative with that. Over here is your main message of your card. And again, for your main message of your card, you would want to, first off, definitely tape your card just quickly, a couple pieces of tape, down to your table so it's not sliding around and moving around. That can cause real big issues and problems. Get your paper uh, down, tape down to the working surface, your table, your kitchen table, dining room table, stack tray, your... Um, you might be working on a board of some sort in your lap. Um, what else you might use? A coffee table. So now when you have that done, tape down, then you do the same thing. And again, if you have a T-square like I have here, this makes your life a lot easier because then you can just take your T-square and rest it on the paper and almost just slide it up and down. You're always going to have a straight, perfect line like that and then you don't have to do as much measuring. So that's really the key. If you're going to do a lot of occasional cards, you definitely want to invest in one of these because it'll make your life 100% easier. So what we can do is, let's show you how easy we can do this. You can use your T-square to do your measuring too. So we're going to say our first top message is usually dear so-and-so, and you might have the person's name or whatever, like that. That goes up here, right here. So that, you maybe make a small line up top, like this here. This is how most professional cards look when you buy them in the stores. The top line is, you know, dear mom, uh, you know, dear sister, dear brother, or, you know, dear so-and-so. And then you have that up on the left. Then here, when you, when you want to get your lines in for your message, you just decide w how wide you want your lines. Do you want really a lot of lines in here to do a really, really a lot of words in your message? Or do you want to keep it simple and go with fewer words? and just maybe have five or six lines, it's up to you. For this card, I think I'm gonna go with maybe lines every half inch. So I'm gonna start here and go half. I just make a little tiny line, a little dot. One half, one half, one half inch, 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 one half inch like that. Then I come over here, I take my T-square ruler and I just slide it up until I get to that first line, like this. like that, and I just make a super light line. Then I slide it down the half inch, perfect. Hold it, oh, I keep it still, and I press on it so it doesn't move, and then I get to that next little dot of dot we made for half inch down. I get the line, the, the T-square is lined up with the whole edge of this paper over here on the right. Then I press down hard on the ruler so it doesn't move, and I do another line. And then you just go right down the line like this. Just like that. And you get all your super light pencil lines. You don't want to draw these lines dark. You just want to draw them enough so you can see them at home. 
while you're working. And I'm hoping you can see these as I'm going down the line here. And it looks like they're a little bit light. You might not see them as much. I think you could probably see them. I'll do them darker so you can see what I'm doing here. So again, we made our top line here like that. Make sure it's nice and square and straight by using the T-square along the right edge of our card. And that's good. And then we go here. We'll do the same thing. I'll do them a little bit darker so you can see. Just like that. How does everybody like the new light? I bought a new studio light here for my videos and I think it's a lot brighter. You can probably see my pencil lines a lot easier. But I still like to do a little bit darker here so you can see. But that's it. That's all you have to do. And then again you would do the same thing. You would draw very carefully either script or print the message that you want to um, create. And you draw your uh, print or your script first in pencil. I would even go one step further. I would I would do your message I would do this. I would do your message first, like write out a message that you might want to say that you have, like um, you know, uh dear mom. And then you might say, you know, uh it's so great that you have been a part of my life. And you can keep drawing out your idea of what message you want to put uh, in your um, card first. Get it all worked out so you, you in, like the message, you've, you've written it down, it sounds good. Sometimes I go in and I go online. So you can go online on Google or you do a search online and you can search like poems for like Mother's Day or whatever it might be, birthday poems, whatever it is. So you can even look things up if you're not great with, you know, writing down messages and things or you're not, you don't have the gift of uh, writing, things like that. Not a problem. You always have other options. You might have a book of poetry you can use or all kinds of interesting things. There's the Bible, different books. You can go in and do some, um, you know, type things like that, like biblical quotes or quotes from the different religious books, uh, you know, that they have out there. And so, you you know, the sky's the limit. You can really find whatever message. But I would say if you can have your message written down first on paper, get it the way you like it. You might have to scratch some things out and redo a few sentences. You might have to flip it over and start another one and, and kind of get it all perfect so that it's just right. And then you go in, you draw it really super light onto your paper and check your spelling. And then once that's all good, then you use your Sharpie marker and you go over it with your Sharpie marker on top of the pencil line, pencil lines that you've drawn for your writing. And that's it. And then you just erase. And once you're done, you just erase. And you can see that if you erase these pencil lines, I did them a little darker. But even as you, you can see how dark I did them, but if you were, they come off pretty well. But if you do them really lightly, you'll never even see them, of course. They just disappear because you did it in a light, light, light pencil line. Again, I did the darker pencil line so you can see how I did this on the video. That's all. Okay? So this is great. I'm hoping you'll try a lot of these, have fun with them. The more you do them, the better you're going to get at them. You can make them ahead of time. If you're really in a creative mood, you can start creating a couple cards here and there before holidays or people's birthdays. You know, the sky's the limit. Again, you can do this as much as you want. They're fun to do. And again, they're um, you always want to do them nice and quick, fast. They look better when they're quick and loose and free looking. And, you know, it's a, a nice smaller composition. So it's not like you have a whole big sheet of paper you have to work on. These go quick. You can do this in like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes maybe 10 minutes to draw and maybe another 15, 20 minutes to paint it and you're, and you're good to go. All right. Thanks again for coming by, painting along with me. We're doing occasional cards. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you'll stick with this process and method that I use for cards. Works great. And you can always modify it. If you learn my way first, then you'll, chances are you'll do your own spinoffs on it and do things differently and maybe come up with some more interesting and creative ideas uh, on your own. But in any case, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching. Happy painting and enjoy the journey, everybody.